us today. I'm Ralph Sexton and I want to thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart the way you have responded to help Western North Carolina. It's been an unbelievable tragedy, destruction on the magnitude that you lose vocabulary, that you use all your big words, catastrophic, unbelievable, and it doesn't touch the surface. And you have responded, God's people. I, I can't even tell you the first two weeks it was like the wild, wild west with no uh, telephone lines, no cell towers, no water, no electricity, no internet, and you're just out there. And the first people to come into Western North Carolina were the churches of South Carolina and uh, Eastern North Carolina, they out of Southern Virginia, and they quickly responded with water and food and kept us going those first two critical weeks. We still today have people in our community that do not have electricity. We still have people that do not have drinking water. And you are a blessing. And I want to thank you for your love, your prayers, and your support. I wrote a little note here talking to a pastor earlier today. And it's sort of overwhelming. Where do I start? What do I do? And this is for homes and individuals, businesses, and churches and the first thing you do is you clean it out you muck all the mud and junk out of the property and then you have to dry it out and that's so important for future health because if the timbers are not dried then you have to deal with the mold issue later on and so this is something important and then phase two you go into the rebuilding and restoring and then phase three, uh, that's months and months away. You go back into your painting and decorating and landscaping, and it's a project. And many of you are living on uh, streams and banks of water that have changed forever. I talked to someone at the Nolichucky River uh, area just earlier in the week, and they said the actual course of the river has changed. Many places it's down to bedrock. Some places there'll be a cliff 40, 50 feet high where it will cut through the landscape. And it's hard to believe the Swannanoa River Valley and our friends up in Spruce Pine and Garin Creek and Fairview. It, it, it's all over Western North Carolina. And you, you go to one area to help and here's another area that hasn't even been touched. Earlier in the week we had a a newspaper report of people that were reached by the mule team and they uh, got to them after 21 days of no one getting into their community not even a place to land the helicopters so you have been a blessing I want to thank you I want to encourage you to keep praying for us and your generosity to give the numbers are on your screen we're helping we're going to talk more about that today we're going to update you on what you can do and at the same time I want to give you some powerful word from the Lord. A lot of days at Hearts with Hands they've been feeding a thousand for breakfast while they were dealing with 120 out of town rescuers and search people and cadaver dogs at Trinity and then just this past Sunday, Monday, Tuesday over at the tent in Johnson City we were able to distribute over 90,000 pounds of food and it's all because of you, God's people, giving, sharing, and helping. The 800 number is up. You can give online. And if you need to talk to me personally, you tell the secretary, I need to talk to Pastor Ralph, and I will call you. I've done that to many, many people these last three weeks, trying to work together and team up together. I love you very much. I want to thank you again for how you have rescued people. You have literally help save lives. Andrew's going to take you and let you see a little bit and then I'll come back with some scripture for you.
Thank you for joining me out of doors. I'm standing over here by one of the wells that we've dug on the church property. As you have heard me mention, water, those first two and a half weeks, very, very precious commodity. After two and a half weeks, we started to get more tractor and trailer loads of water in. But at the very first, it was life or death. That's the power of water. And so we dug a well on our church property, uh, thanks to people like you helping us and loving us. And then as the need increased, we dug a second well. I'm gonna take it to, uh, over to let you see that in just a moment. But being Baptist, the way we are, we have to name everything. So we named this first well, Jacob's Well. And the other well that we dug for the community to have free water is called Rachel's, Rachel's Well. And so I wanted to read something to you out of uh, John chapter four. And Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. You remember the woman there in Samaria, she's asking, uh, uh, at the well, a lot of questions about her own life and her future. And Jesus is talking to her and he's saying, you know, I've asked you for uh, uh, this drink of water, but you could ask me for living water. And the lesson that's there goes all the way back to the Old Testament. You remember when Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness? And it was after that that God revealed his name to him, remember? And God said, Moses, you tell them that I am that I am. And we come to this passage in John 4, and what happens? Jesus reveals himself as the great I am. You remember all the things he said? He said, I am the bread of life. I am the true vine. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he also said, I am the good shepherd, and I am the living water. And it was at this well, Jacob's well there, uh, 2,000 years ago, 
that that revelation was made to the woman about the living water. Now, to really understand it, we've got a greater appreciation for water right here in Western North Carolina than we've ever had because our city water system is still not drinkable. We have some water online now for sanitation, but there's the drinking water is not in the lines yet. The filtration plant is not open yet. And so that living water phrase becomes very important. You have to have water to stay alive. You've got to have water. Now, the human body, you can go for two, maybe three months without food, but you can only go for a few days without water, less than a week, and you've got to have water or you will die. And you look around at all these beautiful trees, all these beautiful plants here on the property, and you know, you can have something growing in, in all this uh, rich forest soil. And, but if you don't have water, it, you can have all the nutrients in the ground. It can be in the soil. And here's the tree or here's the plant, but it takes the water to transfer the nutrients from the soil to the plant or to the tree. And that's the same way it is spiritually. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've got to have that living water inside of me. I can have a body, I'm a, I'm a clay vessel, but until I have the living water inside of me, there's no transfer from the Spirit of God, the living water, into my heart and life, into my well-being. And that's what Jesus was talking to her about. He is saying, I can, you can get a drink of water here out of this well, and that'll last you for a few hours, but the water that you need is that living water, that life eternal. In the background, you can still hear the trucks coming in. You can still hear the sirens on the switchers coming through with the traffic. All of these things are a part of post-disaster cleanup. But the greatest cleanup I need and the greatest cleanup you need is for God to clean us up on the inside. Don't miss an opportunity to draw nigh to Him at the well of living water.
Thank you for staying with us. I appreciate so much uh, that you're going to the phone, you're calling that 800 number, and you're writing down the mailing address, how you can help your business, your Sunday school class. All of you have pitched in. We've even heard from children uh, sending little colored cards that we can put into the boxes and tell people that they're being prayed for. Well, we told you about Jacob's well. We told you we had to build another well, drill it, and uh, you can see that we've made a water station and it says the water is safe to drink. And then uh, here's the environmental testing of the water, uh, that it's clean and healthy and beautiful. Uh, we went through about 80 feet of solid granite mountain rock and had a beautiful stream of water underneath it pumping about 34 gallons a minute. And so the people can come here and now I can take you up to Rachel's well. And so we now have Jacob and Rachel on the property and they're pumping water. And uh, the Jacob's well is going to our uh, Family Life Center and we've dedicated Rachel's well to the public. And so if I go back to John 4 and I talk about the value of that water, it, Jesus said, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be, here's the key, in him a well springing up into everlasting life. And as I mentioned earlier, water is so essential. Water is the very essence of life. And you cannot have life without water. And 2,000 years ago, it was a very, very precious commodity because it was in a barren land, most of it a desert land. We didn't really understand that a lot until the hurricane came through and devastated Western North Carolina and destroyed our water systems. And then all of a sudden, we're back 100 years. We're scrambling to try to have water to drink. And there's something pr very special about what Jesus said in him, that well of living water. And you know, you can have things available and not know how important they are or how they are needed. And one thing that I thought about is that a little baby, you know, when it's in the mother's womb, that little baby is not aware of the potential that's coming. It's floating in the amniotic fluid. It's in a water cell, but that baby doesn't know what's happening. It has eyes, but the eyes are dormant. It has ears, but the ears are dormant. And it has a little voice box, but the voice box is dormant, hands and feet. But what happens when that baby's born? What happens when it comes out? The first thing that baby does is that baby cries. It makes a cry. And that's that cry for help. I'm gonna now come from one environment to the next. And you know what happens with the, the water, that living water? The first thing they do with that baby, they clear the airway, obviously, and then they clean that baby. They clean that little child. And then all of a sudden, everything that was dormant is now born, listen to me, again. It's made new. Those eyes that were dormant, they now see. The ears that were dormant, well, they now hear. The little mouth and voice box that was dormant, they now speak. The hands and the feet are all moving. What changed the circumstance? The cry for help and the washing in living water to bring life to that little child. 
And that's the same thing that happens to you, to me. I need that spiritual living water. I can have a beautiful life, family and friends, and money and success, but I'll be empty on the inside if I don't have that living water that will make all the dormant things in my life. When Jesus comes in, he becomes the living water and he makes all of that come alive. Rachel's well here is providing water to the community. It's a symbol, it's a gift that they can see the value of water for life. But then the ultimate value is the living water that we all need in the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust that you will call upon him today. Allow him to make your life be born again, born anew, and that he becomes the living water of your life. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for staying with us today, a most unusual program. I wanted to share with you what Trinity Baptist Church, Ralph Sexton Ministries, partnering together, we put together the task force for what we had to do right here on this 23 acre campus. We had to make it an emergency management center, housing over a hundred rescue workers from all across the country. And so, Hearts with Hands was still going strong out in Swannanoa, feeding thousands of people a day. And then right here on the west side of the city, we had to take care of the government people. We had to take care of the National Guard. We had to take care of all the Sheriff's Department. Our Sheriff in Buncombe County, Quentin Miller, was very resourceful. He got his help from all across North Carolina. And we then were housing inside the church these search and rescue teams. You see the doors open, you see the fans. We had cadaver dogs. We took all the chairs out of our main auditorium and it became for three weeks a big dormitory. And so we're now having to take the carpet out and we're not complaining because these people were finding our family and our friends and rescuing them, but we're still post flood repair ourselves. But I wanna thank you for your generosity I want to thank you for giving, your resourcefulness. We're already making plans for some things for the winter. We are going to have a wood processing plant for those that heat with wood. We're trying to get that uh, set up. We're also planning ahead for Christmas for all these kids that are displaced and in shelters. And you are a vital part of what's going on. One of the things we want to focus on the next few weeks is helping churches some of the smaller congregations, the pastors are bivocational and they work a job and then they've got a flooded church and we're already trying to help them. One of the pictures Andrew has shown you is a church sitting in the river. The river changed and went right up through the church. That's Holly Springs Baptist at Penrose, North Carolina. So we're helping churches, we're helping individuals and you can help us. And I wanna thank you for giving online if you have an idea or you'd like to give a matching gift, you feel free to tell the secretary to have me call you. Give her your name and number and I'll reach out to you with a personal phone call on how we can help together, partnering together. Trinity Baptist Church has also been the driver on trying to get more wells into other Christian schools and businesses and places that need drinking water. So Pastor Winston has done an outstanding job and the Trinity Baptist staff has worked tirelessly. I think I counted up the other day, we've not cut the lights off and uh, closed the campus for over 22 days. We've been right here 24 hours a day 
with volunteers working and the staff. You are a part of our team and you have made it possible financially. So I want to thank you. Please pray for us going forward. And then, I, could I just interrupt all of this to say please vote. Please go early vote. And Pastor Winston has left some instructions for us on an update on the services and things. I want to encourage you to go to tbcashville.org for those of you in the greater Asheville area and that you can be a part. And then if you would pray for us more than anything else, we need your prayers. If you watch today and God's touched your heart or you feel all alone, you feel isolated, you call that 800 number. We've got people standing by to pray with you and we'll help you any way that we can. May God bless you and let's pray together for God to bless America again.